we're going to look at how ETFs can help uh, investors navigate the, this new period of normalization of interest rates, this global tapering. Antoine, the um, European ETF space has long been dominated by equity products, but last year the majority of inflows into European ETFs went to fixed income exposures. So with the global tapering gathering pace, what impact do you expect on bond yields and client portfolios? Are there any specific segments in fixed income which you particularly favour in this environment? First thing is to say whether global tapering is going to impact so much yields. Our view is that it might have a small impact, but more due to the kind of global economic environment, which is, well, I wouldn't say more than burgeoning, I would say more than burgeoning, which is relatively positive. If you're looking at the very long term trajectory, we don't see yields going up uh, or very high and very soon. And the second point is that tapering is extremely well telegraphed at the moment. And so the specific impact in terms of how it's going to impact on yields, term structure and so on, is hopefully going to be relatively minor. That doesn't mean that investors are comfortable holding all the fixed income instruments that they have. Uh, I think they are looking carefully at duration, either moving very short duration to kind of uh, neutralize interest rate sensitivities, the risks that they have in their portfolio. And at the same time, they want to keep being risk on to some extent through credit, through a, a lower quality within credit, so maybe, a, maybe high yield to some extent. If you're looking at the, the, the at the flow breakdown within Europe, European domiciled ETFs, since the beginning of the year, you've got two main themes. US investment grade corporate bonds, whether it's short duration, floating type of, uh, floating uh, rate type of exposures, or all maturity actually. Mm -hmm. That's one trend. The second trend has been, uh, they've come back massively into emerging market debt, local currency. As of the end of September, I think we had, um, out of $25 billion of, uh, of inflows into uh, fixed income uh, ETFs in, in, in the European uh, domicile vehicles, you had more, close to $9 billion into emerging market debt ETFs. So it's quite impressive. I think it's important to consider that the, maybe the effect of the tapering will be mild, but there is no such thing as a global tapering. It will happen at different pace. So what is the result of that? It means currency variation. And it means that if you want to invest in an equity market, you have also to care about the currency risk. Mm -hmm. And the beauties of ETF is that you can choose either you want to have a local market exposure or you can neutralize the currency uh, risk. There is, because of the tapering, op tactical opportunities between the region but beware of the currency risk, and the ETF allows you to enter uh, rapidly, to exit rapidly as well, in either active uh, currency bets or neutralized uh, bets. If you only had um, exposure to passive indices, you, you, you by default, then you get sector biases in there because the biggest issuance is coming from certain sectors. So I, I think that's exactly why you would want an active manager to be able to do that assessment alongside your passive. When we look at the consensus around bonds, what are the consensus doing now? They have introduced the equity risk in the fixed income area. You know, it's massively equity risk that the people are taking through the credit, you know. And the purpose of bonds in a portfolio is to be an insurance. It's the rush for safe assets that will make the difference. And I think, for me, I find the, the ETF very interesting also to have full exposure to the duration that you will need in case there is a recession or an extreme risk. And you can have that through the full maturity benchmark and ETF that is behind. In passive investments on the fixed income side is small. So I don't think there is a major market impact when it comes to price discovery. So in the end, it's all about the active managers and maybe about the central banks doing a distorted price recovery, not about the index vehicles distorting the market. Passive in fixed income represents roughly shy of 11%. It's three times what it was to in 2007, fair enough. So it's been a strong growth. 
but it's still very, very far away of what it is in the equity market. If I look towards our fixed income, um, the vast majority of our portfolios on the fixed income side are actively managed. And when we have exposure to high yield and emerging market debt, we do limit that uh, and we do prefer active managers. We take comfort in uh, a house having 200 you know, uh, credit analysts um, there. And the same on, on the equity side. We're overweight uh, emerging market. But looking at that as part of our diversified portfolio, that exposure will, will be limited. We look towards active managers in that space for liquidity and transparency and, and also the fundamentals. Mm -hmm. Tell, how do you convince clients to also use TFs in, in this space, in the areas where, where there is value of research or when the return dispersions are usually uh, high? Well, fixed income ETFs kind of offer you is that especially in private client world where you've got to know your client intimately and you're, you know them the most out of anyone else, you've got to understand their risk profile and therefore you can buy an ETF and know exactly what you're getting and therefore is it suitable for your private client. We see a lot of private client managers you know, allocate to a strat bond manager who can go anywhere, you know, credit, gubbies, whatever. And so you don't know what kind of risk he's going to be taking in the next sort of iteration of his investment process and so therefore how can you control that overall risk. So I think they give you the building blocks to be able to manage your clients in a very risk controlled way. Um, when it comes to the active versus passive debate, we totally get the fact that we're forced buyers of bonds. You know, that's how passive works. But equally, there's a lot of research coming out that even though we're forced buyers, the active manager will underperform the index. So therefore, if there's a manager who can demonstrate over a long period of time that he adds alpha, then sure enough, definitely go for that. With the advent of a lot of fixed income indices and our ETFs, it's, you know, it's putting the active managers that they've got to show their worth.